If you're an investor, you can dramatically reduce or eliminate the tax that you pay on your capital gains, income from options, dividends. Today, I'm going to give you a four step plan for how an investor can move overseas and reduce their taxes. Over the years, Nomad Capitalist and our hard fought network of experts from accountants to lawyers to other professionals have helped people dramatically reduce and eliminate taxes on investments. Some of what we're going to talk about today could also apply to entrepreneurs. But what we're going to focus on is uh, the crypto investor, uh, to some extent, the stock investor. Certainly, there's different kinds of income that come from stocks. Capital gains are generally treated differently from dividends, which may require more of a tax treaty, uh, whereas capital gains are more based on where you're living. So I'm going to give you a broad brush understanding of the questions that you need to be asking and the plan that you need to be making in four easy steps. If it's your first time here, I'm Andrew Henderson, founder of Nomad Capitalist. We're a boutique consulting firm that helps seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally reduce their taxes, diversify and protect their assets, get second citizenship to make sure they're in the driver's seat. And you can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. We also host the biggest and best offshore event of the year called Nomad Capitalist Live, and that's open to absolutely everyone. So let me give you the four steps, and then we'll break them down. Number one, figure out where you are, figure out where to leave figure out where to go, and figure out how to not owe. Those are the four steps you need to consider. So let's start with number one. Figure out where you are. You have to assess your current situation if you want to improve it. And so let's start with the uh, oft-given disclaimer. If you are a US citizen, if you're a US green card holder, if you are a US person by any measure, uh, you're going to have a little bit of harder time of things. Now, certain people can no longer be a US person more easily. So if you're a green card holder, you may walk away from that green card. If you've had it for a shorter period of time, it's going to be easier than if you've had it for uh, eight years or more. Uh, and so you may be qualified for a US person just because you've been living in the US for a while at any time of uh, type of visa or residence permit. Citizens obviously have the hardest time, but if you are a US taxpayer in any form, uh, you are going to be subject to tax on your income uh, and on your gains no matter where you live. And so the question is, are you willing to extricate yourself from that US status? Uh, in order to expand your options. And so for a citizen, that would mean expatriation, renouncing your citizenship. If it's a green card, uh, giving up the green card so that basically you no longer have the tax status. If it's just a situation of you've been on an E2 visa paying tax there, well, then that's going to be a little bit easier. But for most folks who are citizens or green card holders, you want to figure out how to get out of that. Uh, if you want to reduce tax, you've got an option for investors of moving to Puerto Rico. Uh, you're going to be living in Puerto Rico for a good chunk of the year, and you're going to be doing that on a uh, mid to long term basis. And so if you want that option, that gives you the ability to keep the U.S. Uh, status. You're going to be subject to all the other rules and regulations, but you can have the special Puerto Rico tax treatment uh, on the investments. And so if you're not ready to exit the United States and you don't want access or you don't need access to all the different 251 other countries and territories that you can live in, then Puerto Rico is going to be your better option. That's the question that investors face. Entrepreneurs have an easier time offshoring their income. Uh, it's still going to be more complicated as a U.S. person, uh, and it may be a little bit more expensive, but it's going to be easier to run as an entrepreneur. And for a lot of folks, the trade-off is worth it to keep U.S. citizenship and deal with some hassle. For investors, it is uh, more of one or the other, Puerto Rico or expatriate. Now, if you're living anywhere else, uh, what is the situation where you are? Uh, what are the taxes where you are? Are you able to move somewhere else? Uh, for example, um, you know, people who are investors who maybe don't earn as much in terms of yield or in terms of capital gain, but they're just doing capital preservation. If they live in a place like Spain or in Switzerland, where they can move somewhere else and eliminate or reduce the wealth tax, that's going to make uh, investing easier. Uh, if you can move to another state in the United States, it's not my recommendation, but it may be a first step. Uh, if you're going to move overseas, moving out of a state like California may be a good first step. And so none of this is tax advice. Please don't take it as that because your situation is unique. Uh, but figure out where you are and what you're paying. And so if you're not a U.S. taxpayer, if you're Australian or German or Canadian or Dutch or whatever else, then you simply need to figure out how to extricate yourself from your tax system. And so that's step number two. Figure out how to leave. Again, if you're a U.S. citizen, you've got uh, those couple of options. For most folks, uh, there are some investments that can be put in more complicated structures. Uh, that's a conversation worth having, but it's generally less likely, especially if you're a passive investor. And so uh, for Americans, leaving Puerto Rico or uh, handing in your passport. Uh, if you're anybody else, you want to figure out how do you get out of the tax net? And so in some countries, um, like some Scandinavian countries, uh, some Latin American countries, they may follow you for a couple of years after your uh, tax done residence procedure. They may say, you have to keep paying tax to us 
or you've got to live in a tax treaty country, or you've got to live in a whitelist country, right? So you can't simply move to the Cayman Islands or the UAE for X number of years. If you're French, you can't move to Monaco. Uh, Colombians historically have had issues going to Panama. Uh, and so uh, in general, a lot of the folks that we work with in the West, it's simply a matter of uh, maybe you've got to uh, sell or rent out your house. You can't have a, a available accommodation. Maybe you don't want to be remitting money to your country anymore. Maybe you don't want to have bank accounts. I mean, in some countries, it really pays to go scorch earth to just shut stuff down. Are you willing to do that? Some folks have trouble. They want to keep that house open to them. They think it's just about a day's test. If I only spend five months a year in the country, that's probably going to be a problem in a lot of Western countries. May not be in, in some emerging countries, but in a high tax developed Western country, it's probably going to be a challenge. Again, there's so many different, different situations. This is not tax advice, but just something to keep in mind. Are you willing to make some changes? Are you willing to put a tenant in your house and let them stay there as long as they want? If they move out, replace them and know that as long as you're living overseas, that's the deal. Are you willing to do things like sell cars? Um, you know, are you willing to uh, fully leave your country? If you aren't American, you, you don't until now have the requirement to give up your citizenship. So you can stay Canadian and live somewhere else or just change your tax residence. But the process of getting out of tax residence is sometimes more complicated. And so, uh, again, you want to make sure that you don't have the requirement to uh, go to a certain list of countries for the first couple of years or go through certain procedures. What you may have in many countries is what's called an exit tax. This is both for U.S. Uh, persons who are subject to the exit tax, so U.S. long-term green card holders and citizens uh, are going to be subject to an exit tax. If you're a long-term green card holder and you did some pre-arrival planning uh, that may be reduced based on assets you brought in before you were a green card holder, if you did that, something to keep in mind if you're getting a green card. Uh, otherwise, if you're leaving your country, not all countries have an exit tax, but many do. And so they're going to value your assets. The difference between an entrepreneur and an investor is most investment assets, other than certain private placements or you know private equity type stuff, uh, are going to be relatively easy to value. A Bitcoin is worth exactly what it's worth, right? A share of Tesla, a share of Microsoft, a, a bond, we know what that's worth on the markets. I mean, even if the, the spreads are, are pretty wide, uh, you know, we can figure that out, right? And so that's going to be easier to pin down. And so this is why I'm always telling people, especially in the crypto space, where we saw uh, Ethereum prices basically double recently, right? If you would have left before they doubled, you would have been able to avoid that run up in capital gains. Now, some people are just getting back to even, and so you're still fine, all right? If you bought Ethereum at $2,000 and Ethereum's now at $2,000, then the exit tax, generally speaking, wouldn't apply to you. Because an exit tax is not uh, a tax on your assets in most cases. It's a tax on capital gains because your country is saying whether you're giving up your citizenship in the US, you're, you're relinquishing a long-term green card, or you're exiting a country's tax system but maintaining the citizenship in cases where that's allowed, hey, we don't want to track you down around the world. Whatever you made here, pay us on that now and then enjoy yourself. All right, so let's just give the example. You bought Ethereum at $2,000. Ethereum's now back to $2,000, but you think it's going to $4,000, okay? You don't know anything. But if you bought it at $1,000 when it was the dip and now it's $2,000, you're gonna have capital gains tax on that. And so in some cases, uh, if you haven't owned it very long, i.e. you bought it at $1,000 a month ago and now it's $2,000, you may be subject in countries that do this to ordinary income tax, right? And so if you're someone who is uh, you know, doing relatively short-term positions, your exit tax may be higher. If you have longer-term positions, you may want to structure when it is that you want to leave to have those be long-term capital gains. If you're living in a country like Germany, which is up until now allowed uh, you know, capital gains over a year on crypto to be exempt, uh, you want to look at what you need to do, do uh, to do that. There are some countries where you might need to sell the asset and then leave. So you sell, you pay, or you sell and you're exempt from paying, and then you go. Uh, that's the case in, in Puerto Rico, for example. People take stuff into Puerto Rico and they think, oh, just being in Puerto Rico helps. Generally speaking, you want to sell the asset while you're there, sell the business, sell the investment, what have you. And so uh, some people will go to Puerto Rico for a while and then they'll later decide, hey, I don't want to live in Puerto Rico, I'm just going to expatriate. And so they can take advantage of those savings in Puerto Rico, but they're going to generally want to sell those assets. And so how to get out of the system? Uh, you know, those are the factors that you want to consider. This is why I'm telling you, if you believe that assets are down, that's the time you should be doing the tax planning. I get it. No one's in a good mood when their stock portfolio drops 30%. No one's in a good mood when their crypto goes down 70% or when Bitcoin goes from you know, 68 to, to, to 24. 
I get it. But if you believe in your asset, you need to take the risk to say, this thing's gonna come back in the future. Let me invest in myself and let me get out now. Because again, we've had folks who bought Bitcoin at like $50, no joke. We had one guy, he stocked out, he loaded up the truck at $50. He's, he's pretty happy, even at 24 grand. Uh, but we have people who also got in uh, at 20, right? And so if you leave, if you bought it at 20, you sell it at 24, you're gonna have a nominal capital gains tax. And if you think it's going back to 68, just as an example, you're gonna have that entire run up from 24 to 68. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna cost you the capital gains tax on the four to get out now. And so you need some liquidity. Now, you can also look at how to leave in terms of timing. Some cases, right, if you leave in January, you have you know, the entire tax year, you have the next tax year, or if you leave the beginning of the tax year, you have until the next tax year to pay. So there may be some cases where you can get yourself you know, six, 12, 15 months by properly structuring it. There may be some countries where you can delay the exit tax or you can provide security. Uh, for certain investment types, that's harder, but it may be something to, work in, to look into, right? Can I somehow defer the exit tax legally? But the goal is to leave before even exit tax. So if you're selling a business, if, you all, you know, if you're selling Bitcoin or cryptocurrency or stocks or, or something else, especially something that grows fast, you want to be out before the asset takes off. Now, step three is finding out where to go. And step four is finding out how to not owe. These steps can theoretically be done together. The question is, uh, how do you value your finances and your lifestyle? And you could also add in freedom. A lot of people are looking for places to go where there's freedom, especially if you're in the cryptocurrency space. Where do I go where there's more freedom? Where do I go where there are fewer regulations? Where do I go where crypto is more welcome? Because I have a lot of friends who've left the US with their crypto. Some have given up citizenship. And they say, oh my goodness, it's such a liberating feeling to just not have to be around for the US nonsense. Uh, and so whatever country that you want to get away from, uh, you, you, know, you could factor that freedom. Um, and so some folks value lifestyle more. Hey, uh, I'd rather go somewhere where I fit in better and the weather's better and whatever else. Obviously, if you're talking about in, in being an investor, the financial part, your tax bill, that's gonna be pretty important. So are they equally important, right? Freedom and lifestyle put together, is that equally important with finance? Or does the actual jurisdiction and the freedom and lifestyle there uh, beat the finance part? That will dictate uh, what you choose. Don't tell me you're going to France. Don't, generally speaking, tell me you're going to Spain or you're going to Argentina or any kind of high-tax country. That's not going to help you. There are, uh, there's a smorgasbord of low-tax countries, zero-tax countries. So zero-tax countries, you know, the UAE, um, you know, places like that. Uh, there are countries that have specific tax exemptions for cryptocurrency. So for a long time, that was Belarus. Uh, Germany has this exemption. Don't think it'll stick around. Uh, other countries have carved out things for you know, certain kind of investors. Other countries in the investment space just have no capital gains tax or have no dividend tax or have no wealth tax. That's a lot of countries, quite frankly. Um, and I think you know, something like a citizenship by investment in the Caribbean would give you a country where you can always go and live. Even if you're not going to live in that country, having that second citizenship would be a good you know, thing to have in your back pocket. I can always go and live in Antigua and they're not going to tax stuff like my capital gains, uh, even if I'm not going to live there now. Uh, so no capital gains tax countries. There's tax exemption countries with specific investment focused tax exemptions. There's countries like Uruguay where there's just you know, broad tax exemptions. You've got countries in Europe which have less broad tax exemptions where you need to do proper planning like the NHR program or the program in Italy. Uh, and whether you're an American or not, that could make a difference. Um, you know, you've got countries that are territorial based where if you structure your affairs properly, it may involve some kind of corporate structure for your investments. It varies by country. You, need, uh, you may not you know, be deemed as remitting the income to that country. So you've got countries in Southeast Asia, like Malaysia and Thailand. You've got countries like Panama and Costa Rica, uh, countries like Georgia, where foreign source income is not taxed. Now, uh, if you have dividend income, you're going to want to factor in, do I need to live in a country that has a tax treaty? If I have enough dividend income to where it, it surpasses what I, what I would save by living in a zero tax country for capital gains, you might live in a country where you pay a few percentage points on your capital gains in order to get a lower dividend tax rate if a tax treaty with the country where you're investing in is needed. So that's where cryptocurrency is better because it's not necessarily tied to any one country's stock market or any one country's turf. Right? So dividends from the U.S., if you live in certain countries, are going to be taxed at a 30% withholding rate. Canada, uh, European countries, countries like that. Right? You may want to change your investing strategy and invest in places like Singapore, where there's not a dividend tax, just out of the box. And then you can live in a zero-tax country. So you, know, you want to figure out 
what's the tax situation where you want to go? You've also got non-DOM countries. Again, it's a slightly different version of territorial where you're not bringing the money into the country. You bring the money that you need to live, uh, that you need to live, and the rest of it stays outside and untaxed. And so capital gains may be exempt under many of those regimes. So that's a lot of countries in Europe, uh, like the UK or Ireland or Malta or Cyprus have those programs. So a lot of countries in Europe can be tax friendly. A number of countries in Southeast Asia, Central America, obviously the Caribbean, there's both residence programs like the Cayman Islands, as well as the citizenship by investment programs where you actually get the citizenship, which entitles you, of course, to live there. Otherwise, you're looking at a residence permit. Uh, and so if you get that, uh, you can live in those places. But again, uh, South America, by the way, not a lot of places, but uh, Uruguay uh, stands out. Uh, Chile probably heading in the wrong direction, though it has been good in the past. Uh, there are some countries in Africa that may be somewhat friendly for, for certain people, Mauritius, for example, uh, but generally not that interesting. Uh, Eastern Europe could stand out. So you've got lots of places to choose. Uh, but there's lots of different ways to reduce tax. So look at all those different tax incentives and then match that with where it is that you want to live. And so people come to us and say, listen, I, uh, I love Ireland. I want to live in Ireland. Uh, I'm not even really that concerned with the tax. I'm happy to pay. Okay, Ireland, you're going to pay something to live there. Um, there's a number of different ways you can immigrate there, even if you're not qualified for citizenship by descent, which if you have a parent or grandparent that was, that was Irish, you can get a residence permit. If you're an investor, it's probably a little bit easier because you're not technically working uh, unless you are deemed working as a professional investor. Uh, but it's going to be easier to get in there, and they have uh, a tax incentive for foreigners who want to come uh, and live there. And so you can reduce your taxes but not pay zero. So if the lifestyle of Ireland, where they speak English and everybody's nice, uh, beats the uh, you know, zero tax somewhere else, then that's worth it, right? Other people come and say, hey, tell me where I can go and pay nothing. Tell me where I can go and pay less than 5%. Let me choose from that, right? Or tell me where I can go in Europe and get the best deal possible. I'm willing to pay something, but I want to pay as little as possible. And so that's going to, that's going to, you know, vary based on how much money you make. You know, if you're making a hundred million dollars a year, paying half a million dollars a year in Switzerland is not going to be the end of the world to live somewhere that, you know, maybe you want to live. If you're doing that, you would probably want to go and get European citizenship by descent or get Malta citizenship program in 18 months for about a million bucks. And then you can cut that Switzerland tax bill in half. Um, so the question is, where do you want to live for the lifestyle? And then how do you get in? And if you tell me you want to live in Slovakia, that's going to be a little bit harder than saying I want to live in Portugal. Where there's numerous you know, residence programs. There's a golden visa. There's self-sufficient visas. Um, you know, so countries that don't have residence programs, you may have to go and get a job. If you don't want to get a job because you're an investor, you know, that those, some of those countries that focus on employment-based immigration may be out. However, you want to check your family tree. If you have uh, a parent, grandparent, great-grandparent from a European country, see if you can get citizenship by descent. Now, it may not be the first step to take because sometimes those take three or four years to get. And if you're looking to move now, obviously you don't want to just sit around and keep paying tax on your investments that you're trying to reduce because you're waiting three or four years to get citizenship. But let's say you've got a Polish grandparent. You can move to Poland as a Polish citizen, but you can also move anywhere within the European Union. You can also move to Switzerland. You can also move to uh, anywhere in Europe, basically. And so, uh, you know, don't look at, oh, I don't want my Polish citizenship from my grandparents because I don't want to live in Poland. You could get that Polish citizenship and then, uh, you know, move to Greece, move to Italy, move to Ireland, take advantage of tax incentives there. And so even though Poland is not necessarily tax friendly for investors, you have that optionality. Same thing in the Caribbean, where you could get citizenship in a tax-free country, or you could get citizenship in a country that doesn't tax capital gains, or you could get citizenship in one of the Caribbean countries where the tax, taxes aren't as favorable, and then go and spend time in one of the more tax-favorable countries, because you've got access to different countries. If you're an American or a Canadian, you may not really understand that. You're like, I'm an American, I can live in the United States. I'm a Canadian, I can live in Canada, right? I mean, even Australians and New Zealanders understand they have some free movement. So, uh, you, the concept of free movement is helpful for figuring out where you're going to go. If you don't have citizenship uh, through, through your family tree, look at something like a citizenship by investment program if you want to live in the Caribbean. Um, obviously, if you're an American and you're giving up your citizenship, you're going to need second citizenship somewhere, although where that is doesn't necessarily matter, right? Because even if you get second citizenship in Turkey, uh, Turkey's not going to tax you for not living there. And so if you were a Turk getting a residence permit in Portugal um, and then taking advantage of the Portugal tax incentives, that would be fine. But figure out where you want to live, figure out what the taxes are, and you could let you know, either one of those, the tail could wag the dog or vice versa, uh, which comes first. Um, but then figure out how you're going to get into that country. It could be a residence permit. Okay? If you're going to move to Dubai, you're not going to become a citizen of the UAE. You're going to get a residence permit by starting a company. Maybe that's a holding company for investments. And by the way, uh, if you're investing in stuff in the United States and you are not a U.S. taxpayer, 
uh, you are going to have certain conditions under which you're a US, you owe U.S. estate tax and you want to use a foreign structure to block that potentially. Uh, and so a holding company structure for certain U.S. Uh, or other country investments may be beneficial. Um, so residence permit is fine. Understanding that you need to be out of your country's tax system, which for Americans means if you don't live in Puerto Rico, you're out as a citizen and you need a second passport. But again, you could be a Dominica citizen living in the UAE. They're not going to judge you. Um, or you could get citizenship in an EU country and then go and live in another EU country that's more tax favorable. Or you could get citizenship in Antigua and Barbuda and live in Antigua and Barbuda. You can do that too. Uh, but you're looking at what's the taxes that affects you. Just because there's an income tax may not affect you if all your income is capital gains. Um, look at dividend tax treaties if you have you know, investments that are dividend paying in high tax countries. Uh, look at not just the headline tax rates, but look at the incentive. Again, you go to Uruguay, you get a multi-year tax incentive, and it's pretty straightforward, right? They just don't want your money. In Europe, a little bit less complicated, but still very doable. Or you pay a fixed amount of money, even in places like jo uh, Jersey or Gibraltar or smaller places. Hey, here's a lump sum, right? Italy, Switzerland have similar systems. And so um, what you want to align is capital gains versus dividends. Again, if you're in crypto, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, however, some kinds of you know, crypto staking, crypto income, crypto, you, know, you put your money in, in some kind of uh, exchange that pays you a return, that also needs to be evaluated. So there's so many variables, which is why we recommend a, a plan that takes weeks and months to put together and considers all the variables of where you're leaving, where you're going, what your lifestyle, freedom, and finances will look like. But those are four questions that you need to ask yourself. And so the question is, if you have a place that you wanna live, is that tax friendly? If not, how do we find the next best place that's tax friendly? And if you just want a list of options, I can promise you there'll be dozens of places around the world that will be tax friendly, especially for investors. You can find a place to go where you're treated best.